morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Chalmers. Please be seated. On the church calendar, this is Presbyterian World Service and Development Sunday. And we'll also, as you can see, be celebrating the Lord's Supper as part of worship this morning. So I welcome you to Chalmers and I invite you to take the next few moments to prepare for the worship service with a time of quiet prayer. So let's bow our heads. Let's pray to God. Please join in the responsive call to worship. We bow before the mystery of God's love. From it came our creation. By it we are daily nurtured. Through it we find salvation. A consuming fire of purity. God's love is yet warm and gentle compassion. We respond to the God who is love by loving in return. Let us worship God together. Let's bow in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, your power is incomparable, your majesty infinite, and your love beyond imagination. You are hidden in mystery and yet in this hectic and busy world, you are peace and you are our rest. In a harsh and unforgiving world, you are tenderness and you are mercy. In a dark and cold world, you are light and you are comfort. And so we are moved to worship you as the one who created us, the one who redeems us, the one who guides us, one God this day and always. God of mercy, you do not desire for us to live in darkness or in sinful exile. You call us to liberation through confession. So out of a desire to be free, we confess to you our sin. God of loving kindness, we know the truth that your love is infinite and ours is so often narrow and conditional. We focus on ourselves and seek to receive love rather than to give it. To be served rather than serve. To be forgiven but not to forgive. Hear our prayers. Create in us clean hearts. Forgive who we have been. Help us accept and give forgiveness. And let us be at peace with you and one another. Awesome God, you are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your love. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our sins from us. And we give you thanks and praise, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise God singing Thou Whose Almighty Word in our hymn book, it's number 291.
Again, let us pray. God of wisdom, God of love, we long to hear your holy word in new and fresh ways. Open our ears to the call of your voice. Open our eyes to the signs of your kingdom. Open our minds so that we might understand your truth. We pray in the name of Jesus who is your living word. Amen. Reading the first six verses from Psalm 71, let us read responsively. Let us hear God's word. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Amen.
Reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 13. In fact, I'm going to begin with the last verse of chapter 12. And I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. passage of scripture this morning, Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. Uh, this is a short passage of scripture, but I'm sure we all know it well. In fact, in a way, this, this uh, passage of scripture is the basis of our whole Christian culture. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. We're going to sing through a song, When the Poor Ones. Uh, we're going to play through it once so that it reminds you of it because you won't think you've only sung it once before. So please stand as you're able and listen first and then we'll sing.
be seated. This being PWSD Sunday, I'm going to share a portion of the Presbyterian World Service and Development PowerPoint presentation uh, in lieu of a, a sermon this morning. And I, I do want to challenge you, though, in this way. I, I would like you to, to leave the service today with at least one new learning in mind, something you've learned about the work we do through PWSD. So one, one discovery or one learning, but also one, one step that you might take in response to what you've heard. One way in which God might direct you, uh, an action step uh, in light of the work we do through PWSND. Last year I was delighted to be asked to serve on the National Committee of Presbyterian World Service and Development which is the Development and Relief Agency of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. For over 70 years, our church has been actively working to serve marginalized and vulnerable people through PWSND. Rooted in the living hope of Christ and inspired by God's promise of abundant life, PWSD envisions a sustainable, compassionate, and just world. With support from Presbyterians across Canada, like you and me, we respond to God's call to serve the marginalized and distressed. We respond to help communities around the world overcome poverty, recover from emergency situations, and build sustainable futures. Now, when possible, PWS works ecumenically with other Christian organizations, such as the ACT Alliance, Kairos, the Canadian Food Grains Bank, and Canadian Churches in Action, along with local partners, to better understand needs and to have a greater impact in communities, the communities where our church is working overseas. Because partnerships allow us to respond faster in times of emergency and also help us to maximize Presbyterian donations. In 2017, PWSND supported 56 different projects in 24 countries. These projects work to help communities overcome poverty, recover from emergency situations, and embrace new hope for the future. This map, and I'm not sure how well it comes across, but the map that you're looking at shows where, where PWSND is active in the world. The green color signifies development activities. The orange is where we're involved for emergency relief. And the yellow means both development and emergency response activities have taken place in that country or in that region. Uh, I'll just mention that one of the possibilities uh, of being a member of the National Committee is an opportunity to travel somewhere in the future, but to travel with one of our PWS and staff um, to one of our mission partners or mission projects in some part of the world. Uh, to support that work, but also to assess it and to look for other partners and projects in that area. PWS has uh, several priorities. We work together as a church through PWSND, and it can be looked at in six different priorities. Food security, health, economic empowerment, human rights, emergency relief, and refugee sponsorship. PWSND's long-term development programs work at the grassroots level to combat poverty and make lasting changes. 
You see, by addressing the root causes of poverty, people are empowered to take part in their own development and to build more sustainable futures. And emergency relief is provided in times of conflict and where there is either natural or human-made disaster. Together we respond to seek to end hunger. It's striking and devastating really to know that 815 million people still do not have enough to eat. 815 million. And more than half the number of the world's hungry are living in conflict zones. And so it's wars and violence and conflict and repression that contributes to hunger. PWS programs provide farmers with seeds, tools, fertilizers, and training in organic, sustainable farming practices that increase crop yields and build resilience to environmental changes. Programs also teach families to improve dietary diversity and prepare nutritious meals. In times of emergency, PWS and D provides food aid and agricultural livelihood recovery. Much of this work is done in food security through Canadian Food Grains Bank. A membership of 15 church-based agencies all working together with the common goal of ending hunger worldwide. Since 1983, the Canadian Food Grains Bank has grown to become one of Canada's leading food assistance organizations. And it's the predominant Christian response to global hunger. This is really impressive, I think. Last year, the Food Grains Bank helped 900,000 people in 35 countries to improve their food security. And Presbyterians across Canada are dynamic partners in their effort to help those who don't have enough to eat. You know, I'm struck by the fact that, that last week Joanne spoke to us about care and share. So that's our own local response to food uh, needs, food insecurity. But we need to know as we contribute to PWS, we're also having an impact um, through Canadian Food Grains Bank. Support from PWS and D and the Food Grains Bank is helping people like Esther, a Malawian farmer who has many responsibilities. Esther takes care of her four children and her elderly parents, all the while farming two hectares of land. But with changing rain patterns, low soil fertility, and poor access to seeds, Esther's crops didn't yield enough food to feed her own family. Esther had even been skipping meals. But things changed after she participated in an agricultural training project with PWS and the Food Grains Bank. She received seeds and learned farming techniques to increase her crop yields. Preventable illnesses and inadequate access to health care impact many people in the developing world. PWS and D's health programs help bring medical care to remote villages, ensure mothers and children receive the care that they need, tackle prevalent childhood diseases, improve access to clean water, and empower communities to prevent the spread of HIV. There are currently 36 million people living with HIV and AIDS around the world. Now, just to put that in some kind of context, I think the population of Canada is approximately 37 million. 36 million people living with HIV AIDS. PWS programs aim to teach people how to prevent the spread of HIV and AIDS while providing testing, treatment, counseling, and care for those living with the disease. PWSND is also helping communities care for orf orphans and vulnerable children by providing nutritious food 
clothing, health care, and psychosocial counseling to overcome the trauma of losing parents. PWS is supporting the Shining Hospital in Nepal to bring health and hope to people affected by tuberculosis and leprosy. The Shining Hospital itself was a source of hope for Persotum. When a mysterious illness took hold, he was driving his bus when he experienced a sudden agonizing pain in his hand. And this pain spread throughout his body and became so intense that he struggled to finish his route. And when the pain didn't subside, he spent his savings traveling to visit various neurologists, but no doctor could provide a proper diagnosis. Fortunately, in this case, his prayers were answered the day he heard about Presbyterian World Service and development, the, the hospital in the remote Banke district in Nepal. There he was diagnosed with leprosy and given medicine. Today, Persotum's health has been restored. I am so happy to see him smile again, said his brother. PWS and D's livelihood programs include education, small business development, and vocational training. Having a sustainable livelihood means that people have food, water, shelter, and clothing. It means being self-sufficient self and able to provide for the family. It means access to economic opportunities and meaningful employment. Working with partners in Afghanistan, Guatemala, and Malawi, PWS is helping vulnerable children and marginalized adults access the education that they need to have that will give them new opportunities for the future. In Afghanistan in particular, PWS is working with local partners to increase female enrollment by providing textbooks, school supplies, training teachers, and most importantly, raising awareness and support for girls' education in a region where girls have been neglected for too long. Partners also conduct meetings to help village leaders learn about a child's right to education. Human rights. While many regard this topic of human rights as purely political, it's difficult to deny how connected human rights and sustainable development are. Both signify a movement toward greater human dignity. Because poverty is one of the greatest obstacles to human rights. Poverty erodes people's access to health care, adequate housing, nutritious food, education, and safe water. Working with partners around the world, Presbyterian World Service and Development is responding to situations where women, youth, and other marginalized groups are too often treated like second-class citizens. In emergency situations, thousands or even millions of people face food shortages, displacement, and disease. Children are most often affected. Their lives are disrupted as they are pulled out of schools and placed in precarious, even dangerous situations. Recently, PWS responded to many disaster situations such as extreme hunger in Ethiopia, Somalia, and South Sudan, hurricanes in the Caribbean, ongoing conflict in Syria, and the Rohingya refugee crisis. PWS provided emergency food and non-food assistance in response to hundreds of thousands of Rohingya people who were forced to flee their homes due to violence and persecution in Myanmar. Generous support allowed PWSND to assist in food distributions to 1,884 families. Due to the hasty nature of the setup of camps in Bangladesh, shelter, water, sanitation, and hygiene services were of utmost need. Working through the ACT Alliance, PWS supported the provision of shelter, hygiene kits, water points, 
and latrines. As 2018 marked the seventh year of the civil war in Syria, tragically the need for assistance remains high. Responding through the ACT Alliance, PWSD provided essential non-food aid, including support for housing, education, and trauma counseling. Through the Food Grains Bank, 14,400 people displaced within Syria received monthly food baskets for a year. In Lebanon, 5,800 refugees received food vouchers, allowing them to shop in local markets for the food that they needed. Refugees. Christian congregations can and do make a difference in the life of a refugee family through sponsorship. Through our support, refugees are finding hope and the help they need to rebuild their lives with dignity. Refugee sponsorship numbers continue to increase. The number of active Presbyterian sponsorships is at about 160, representing 446 people. And this includes the refugees sponsored by the congregations within the Presbytery of London, including Chalmers. While the majority of sponsorship applications continue to be for Syrian refugees, PWSND also provided accompaniment to congregations managing sponsorships from Burundi, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Iran, Myanmar, Pakistan, Somalia, and Sudan. Friends, there are a variety of ways that we can support the work of PWSND. And the first is through prayer. Pray for those who lack the basic necessities that they may experience abundant life wherever they live. And I would add, pray for our staff working faithfully, diligently, tirelessly to provide leadership for our work through PWS. You can become a donor as well. Some of us already are. Ultimately, money is needed and resources are needed to support the important programs of PWS around the world. You can support PWS by one-time or monthly donations or by purchasing gifts from the Gifts of Change catalog. And those resources, by the way, are out on the, the small table in our narthex. Be an advocate for change. PWS believes that in order to create a more sustainable, compassionate, just world, policies that prevent people from accessing food or claiming their human rights must be changed. For example, you can advocate for Canada's increased support for overseas assistance. All of this to tackle glo global poverty and hunger. And PWS is part of the I Care campaign. And you can know more about this initiative. Just check out one of these postcards, again, out in the narthex. Stay connected to the work of PWS by their website. You can access the website, weRespond.ca, either directly or through the Presbyterian Church website. There's a newsletter, information on Facebook, and other things. As I said at the beginning, Think of one or two things that you've learned about the work that we do through PWS. Take that home with you. Pray on that and consider one step, one act that you can take in response to this ministry, this information, and how Christ may be leading you. Uh, the, the presentation concludes with a, just, it's a, I believe, about a one-minute video. Uh, it's, the, it's the way PWS and D says thank you to the wider church.
I remind you that it's not only Super Bowl Sunday, it's Soup Sunday. So, um, we're serving soup lunch after the service downstairs. Everything's set up. I saw soup bowls, uh, containers ar arriving, and it's in support of Camp Kintail Campership, sending children to camp this summer. Free will donations, all are welcome to stay for soup lunch. I want to just remind you as well that next weekend, Chalmers is hosting the Presbyterian Young People's Society PYPS Winter Event. Starts on Friday evening, continues on Saturday, uh, wraps up early Sunday afternoon, but PYPS, PYPS will be part of our worship service next Sunday morning. And um, some of our young people are, uh, are attending, and we're hoping for a, a great weekend and a good gathering. I also remind you of the Steve Bell concert, which is now only a week from today. So a week from today, Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we are going to have an awesome time with Steve Bell in concert. Some of you may remember him being here seven, eight years ago. Uh, and if you did, come and hear him again. And if you weren't there, you don't want to miss this. It's also a fundraiser in support of our medical mission team and their ministry in El Salvador and Nicaragua. And Chris, who you have heard speak about this, but Chris Hardy at the front, Chris will be uh, floating around after the service. And if you'd like to purchase a ticket or know more about the concert, please speak to Chris or check with me or Liz or others um, who may be members of that team. So please uh, consider that. Spread the word. Invite friends. Uh, this is going to be a great concert. Uh, a heads up that on Family Day, we're having a fun and games uh, afternoon program, beginning with lunch, but then continuing through to about 3.30 in the afternoon. Indoor games, board games, but also outdoor games such as road hockey. More on that in the next couple of weeks. Um, but if that's of interest, this is for all ages, by the way, uh, but certainly something where we're hoping to connect with the wider community. Uh, I'll just mention that um, in the serving and sharing of communion today, there, there is uh, gluten-free bread. Uh, Tom Hunter will have the gluten-free bread tray. And so as the communion bread is served, if you would prefer to have the gluten-free bread, just get Tom's attention by raising your hand, and Tom will um, uh, bring the, the gluten-free bread to you. And special word of congratulation to Tom and Jane Vanis, a proud grandparents celebrating the birth of their infant granddaughter, Mia Ella Louise. Did I get it right, Tom? Yay. Um, who is the infant daughter of Lindsay and Patrick. And um, congratulations. Uh, thanks be to God. And, and we also wish you journeying mercies on your upcoming trip to, uh, to visit with baby Mia and family uh, in New Zealand. So that will be very exciting. So congratulations to, to you and your family. Uh, those are the uh, life and mission announcements I'm going to mention at this point. Again, remember uh, other things printed in the bulletin as well as um, important information on the Chalmers website. Let's continue to worship God as we present our gifts and tithes to the Lord. The offering will be received.
Let's bow our heads. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, God of mercy, God of justice, God of abundant living, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we present these offerings, these gifts, these prayers as a, an act of worship, as a response to your unconditional, eternal love expressed to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. With all that we have and, and all that we are, we seek to love and to serve and to worship you, to glorify your name, to praise you with our lips and with our lives. Accept these gifts that we give, Lord. Bless us in this act of giving so that we might be a blessing to others. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our praise team again will lead us as we sing, How Then Shall I Live? Let us sing together. Please stand as you're able. The words of the invitation to the Lord's table. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. 
They will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to the Gospel of Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Please turn either in the hymn book to number 539 or to the screens before us. And would you please stand as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we begin what's called the Great Prayer of Thanksgiving, there are uh, responses, and I believe those responses will be before us. Uh, you can also, if you wish, find the same responses on hymn number or page number 564 in our hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let's bow in prayer. Let's pray. Awesome God, in your Son Jesus Christ, the Word became flesh, giving us a vision of your glory, that all people might be brought out of darkness into your marvelous light. How wonderful are your ways, Almighty God. With the apostles and the prophets and that great cloud of witnesses who live for you beyond all time and space, we lift our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, God, for sending your Son to live among us full of grace and truth. Sharing our joy and sorrow, he healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and is risen to rule the world. And that he is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us. And believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. We thank you that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Christ, we take this bread and this cup and give you praise and thanks as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we receive the bread and the cup, that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. Here we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. In your mercy, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Fill us, Lord, with the joy of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people until we feast with you in glory. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for the gift of your love made known in Christ and for your call upon us to, to worship and to serve you through the love of Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit. We lift up the, the awesome work of PWSND and pray, God, that you continue to bless those many people who receive blessings and gifts and support through the work of Presbyterian World Service and Development. We also lift up in our prayers this morning the youth ministry of PYPS and pray, God, that this upcoming winter weekend be a time of great joy, fellowship, and blessing, learning, growth, and sharing for the winter weekend of the Presbyterian Young People Society. Help us as host congregation to be welcoming and supportive. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever. And now we pray as our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let's sing to God's praise a hymn called, The Love of God Comes Close. It's number 474 in our hymn book. If you're using the hymnal, we're singing verses 1 and 2, and 4 and 5. 474.
Please be seated. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to God and he broke it. And he handed it to his disciples and he said, take this and eat. This is my body which is given for many. This is the bread of God for the people of God. And then Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to God. He handed the cup to his disciples and said, take this and drink. This is my blood which is poured out for many. My blood which seals God's covenant. Drink all of it. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. The elders come forward, please.
broken for you.
the blood of Christ shed for us, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May we now go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. And let's sing to God's praise a beautiful communion hymn. Let us talents and tongues employ. Number 563 and on the screens as well. in prayer for our table grace for those who are staying for the soup lunch and then we'll close with the blessing and the choral amen. Let's pray. All praise and thanks be to you Lord God for your many gifts, your many blessings, for your unconditional love in Christ, for the joy of Christian worship and fellowship for your gifts of your presence at the Lord's table, in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup, and for the good food prepared for our nourishment this afternoon. We give you thanks and praise, and we pray in Jesus' name. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now this day and forevermore.